Okay, kiddos, we're finally be ready to begin writing our introductions and conclusions. I know some of you really wanted to start that earlier, but now's the time we're going to get rolling on it, okay? So, we've written our paper, we're now ready to do our introduction and conclusion. When writing both your introduction and conclusion, you need to accomplish one task. Every paragraph needs to be represented. You need to make sure that your introduction and conclusion adequately summarize what all your paragraphs are going to say. Again, every paragraph needs to be represented. Does this mean you should have the same number of sentences as paragraphs? Nope. It just means that your reader, in this case me, shouldn't be surprised by what appears in the body of the paper. And there's an easy way to do that. What you do is this, you read each paragraph and highlight the main ideas of each. Okay, there it is. This is going to be helpful too in case you have trouble finding main ideas in certain paragraphs. If a main idea doesn't stick out in a paragraph, you want to make note of it so you can revise it later. It will need to be made more clear. Okay, so now you've gone through and you've pulled out your main ideas. Here I have my four main ideas. Look at them. I'll wait for you to look through. Do they all seem to have a common theme? Oh, snap! One of them does not. How on earth did I write a paper about the happiness of ice cream and include a paragraph about toddler death? Okay, yikes. That's a little... Ugh. If you notice something like this, sorry, but you need to eliminate the paragraph. That's not a bad thing. You want to make sure you do stuff like that before I do it for you and knock you down a grade. Whew, there it is. I just saved myself from a big grade deduction. Now I have three paragraphs, three main ideas. When I look them over, I see a common theme. Ice cream is good. My introduction and conclusion need to say that. I need to find two ways to restate all these things in about two to four sentences. That will make up the meat of my introduction and conclusion. Why did I say two ways? Well, the introduction and conclusion have to say it differently. So how do I do that? Over 50 years ago, President Kennedy wrote and delivered a speech that he hoped would encourage the United States to support using a lot of money on going into space. His point was to strike at our competitive nature and to get us going into space so that we could be the best country out there. Even though this was a speech, what he did in his introduction and conclusion are worthwhile lessons for you, and you should do the same. For his introduction, he started with a hook. Okay, he talked about how great a city he was in, how great everything was, right? And then he built it up into his thesis. His thesis was, the greater our knowledge increases, the greater our ignorance unfolds. In other words, he wanted us to go into space so that we could be better. Remember that competition thing I mentioned? Then for his conclusion, he took a more conversational, more, informa more informal tone. This means that while the introduction was a bit more serious and formal, he ended by really appealing to his audience on their level. He also made sure to really drive his point home. That's important. You're writing your summary in a conversational tone, and then you're driving it home. It was no longer an issue of, this is what I want to talk about that he did in the introduction. The conclusion is now, this is what I told you, Shazam. Okay, so let's recap. Every paragraph needs to be represented. Feel free to make sure you eliminate them if they aren't worthwhile in the theme. Okay, so we have some steps for that. We highlight the main idea in every paragraph. We look for a common theme, and then we write a theme, and then we write a summary of that theme in two to four sentences. We're doing it twice, remember? And the first time is the introduction. It includes a hook and a thesis. The second time, it's more conversational, and it says, Shazam! Okay, hey, that wasn't too long of a presentation. That gives you time to go back and write, doesn't it? Of course, only after you take your quiz on Schoology. Good luck.